So you're thinking you might want to buy a home in 2021. I'd say you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to briefly go over my brand new ebook, How to Buy a Home in 2021, where I cover everything from reasons to own a home and vocabulary to how-tos, worksheets, and checklists. This video is going to be jam-packed with information. So for your convenience, I have actually put timestamps for each section in the description. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Oh, before I forget actually, if you stick around, I've got a free gift for you at the end. Let me start this video off by introducing myself for those of you who don't know who I am. My name is Andrew McManaman, I'm a realtor with Signature Sotheby's International Realty, but before I became a realtor, I started my career as a manager of an independent and assisted living facility, where my priority was to put smiles on over 250 residents. After five years, I moved to their corporate office where I was in charge of the activity calendars of 10 plus locations. After just three months, I felt like something was missing a void that I didn't really know how to fill. I was missing out on what truly gives my life purpose and that was helping people face to face. I remembered a conversation that I had with one of the residents who just happened to be a retired realtor who told me my personality was perfect fit for the career choice. So I took the course, passed the exam, and over three years later, here I am. Not only do I help people, I help people with the biggest financial decision most people will ever have in their lifetime. So enough about me, let's jump right into it. First off, I wanted to congratulate you on getting ready for the next chapter of your life. It can be very emotional and a stressful process and that's exactly why I wanted to create this video, this one-stop shop video and ebook to help you throughout the entire thing. If you have any questions throughout the video, please don't hesitate to reach out anytime. I'd love to answer your questions. All right, so let's jump to reasons to own a home. For starters, why should you own a home? Well, seven reasons for you. Tax benefits, appreciation, equity, savings, predictability, freedom, and stability. The US tax code lets you deduct interest paid, property taxes, and some of the initial costs when purchasing a home. Home sale prices have actually increased, on average, 5.2% from 1972 to 2014, according to the National Association of Realtors. For the renters out there, the money being paid is money you won't ever see again. Mortgage payments let you build equity ownership in your home. The other reasons touch on predictable payments, freedom to express your creativity in your home with a few DIY projects, and stability allows you to build long-term relationships with your neighbors within the community. All right, so the million dollar question every first time home buyer asks is, what is the process of buying a home? Well, I'm glad you asked. To put simply, it starts off with getting pre-approved for a mortgage so you can understand exactly how much you can afford. And then you wanna meet with a real estate professional to show you homes. Then you decide what home is most ideal for you and your lifestyle. You put an offer in on that home, get an inspection to uncover the home's flaws that will allow for any terms to be negotiated along the way. And when the home inspection is satisfactory, the home will get appraised to determine its true value and how much the mortgage lender is willing to give you to finance the home. If the home is valued less than it is listed, the seller will come down on the price or you'll have to come up with the funds to pay the difference because the lender won't give you that full amount that was at the sales price if it was valued less. Then, preparation for closing continues. The title is searched, financing is organized, and all the parties work together to get it clear to close. After everything is completed, a closing date is set and you begin the next chapter of your life. But how do you prepare to buy a home? Great question. Here's six tips for you. Talk to mortgage brokers and get more than one quote. Be ready to move, especially in this market. Make a good offer. Think ahead at your five to 10, 15 year plans to see if the home you're thinking on makes sense. Develop a home neighborhood wish list and select the areas in which you want to live. So how do you prepare to finance a home? It starts with developing a budget. If you have no idea where to begin, I have included a free gift for you in the description of this video. It is a home budget template to help you stay organized. 
you can reduce your debt any way you can, increase your income, get another job, ask for that raise, whatever you can do to get some more money. Well, I shouldn't say whatever, you know what I mean. And then save for a down payment. You don't need to put 20% down. There are loan programs that are 3% down. The industry average is 7% down, so shoot for that. Keep your job, establish a good credit history, keep saving, and seek down payment assistance from state and local governments. There are special down payment assistance programs that will help you fund your first home. So how do you prepare for house hunting? Well, understand that the best time to buy a home is always five years ago. All jokes aside, if you find the perfect home now, don't risk losing it trying to overanalyze when the market and the interest rates will be the best. Accept that no home is perfect. If it's in your ideal location and doesn't require more work than you've intended for it, act on it. You will second guess your decisions. The process will be scary, but believe me when I say that these feelings happen to everyone. Buy a home because you love it, and then think about how it appreciates, not the other way around. All right, so home hunting questions to ask yourself. Buying a home shouldn't be a daunting task, it should be fun. But understand that buying a home isn't short term. Break down your life goals in five, 10, 15 year increments, just like I said earlier, and ask yourself the following four questions. Are you wanting to build a family? Do you want your home to be close commute to work, friends, or family? Do you need additional space or storage for hobbies and collections? And what types of amenities do you want to live by? These four questions will keep you on track when trying to find a home to fit your wants and needs. All right, so now that what brings us to questions to ask and research yourself about a neighborhood. Is it close to your favorite spots and destinations? Is it safe? Is it economically stable? Is it a good investment? Do you like what you see? What's the school district like? These questions definitely give you a lot of homework to research. A great place to start is by going to niche.com to compare areas of interest based on the previously mentioned questions. Please keep in mind that real estate professionals can only answer so much about a few of these topics as they are bound to a code of ethics to not discriminate. So that brings us to home inspections and what should you know? What, what do home inspectors look for really? Well. They look at the structure, the exterior, roofing, plumbing, electrical and air conditioning, interiors, ventilation and insulation, and fireplace. They compile all their findings into a lengthy report that you can refer back to at any point. This report is insurance. It gives you negotiation power during the inspection contingency to lower the price to cover any immediate costs. And it also is a grocery list you can hold on to for when you decide to sell your home. You can refer back to it to fix a few items to take away some negotiation power in the future. All right, so that brings us to the next step and that is the appraisal process. Once you are under contract, your lender will send out an appraiser to make sure the sale price is in line with the property's true value. Appraisals guide mortgage terms, but understand that it isn't a concrete number and can differ quite a bit actually, depending on who does them. The appraiser's value can be challenged by a comparative market analysis done by a real estate agent if they don't believe the value is correct. All right, so that brings us down to what to avoid before closing. And that is don't purchase a big ticket item such as a car or boat, expense or even expensive furniture pieces don't quit your job don't open or close any lines of credit don't miss paying your bills on time and don't spend the money you were saving for closing costs and down payment and do not ignore the calls from your mortgage rep I only mention this is because it actually happens in real life do yourself a favor and wait until after you close on your home before you make any large purchases all right, so it brings us to a day before closing, your final walkthrough. Before closing, you have the option to walk through the home one last time before you sign your name calling it yours. As much as we like to give people the benefit of the doubt, some people's intentions aren't always the purest. On the final walkthrough, check the following places. Basement, attic, every bedroom, every bathroom, closet, and crawl space. Make sure any requested repairs are done satisfactory and they're still holding up. Make sure no unexpected changes have been made to the property since last viewed. 
Make sure all appliances are perform performing as disclosed. The hot water heater is working, heating and air conditioning are working properly, and the garage door opens and remotes have been left at the home. Along with instruction books and warranties are accessible to you too. And all debris and personal items from the sellers have been removed. All right, so it brings us to something a lot of people don't think of right away, and that's updating your address. Update your address on all public information, utility services, memberships and subscriptions, and personal and business services. All right, so then it takes us to new home duties for a new homeowner. Be sure to save and store your closing documents in a safe place. Change all the exterior locks because you never know who had a key to the home. Deep clean and paint the home before you organize and plan everything for your placement. Take a look at your homeowner's insurance policy to be aware of what your coverage is and give attention to your heating and cooling system along with giving your budget some attention. But Andrew, I bought the house already. Why do I need to revisit my budget? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's very easy to blow the remaining of your life savings on cool, awesome things for your home. But keep in mind that you need to pay for property taxes, homeowners association fees if applicable, and insurance. On top of that, I would even recommend having six plus months of emergency funds just in case something uncontrollable happens. Well, this video has been an absolute mouthful. I appreciate everyone who stuck around until the end and for that, I wanna give you a free copy of my ebook. Hit the link in my bio to download my ebook on how to buy a home in 2021. It's chock full of information that I only scraped the surface on. If you have any questions about it, please, like I said, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks again for watching this week's video. If you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified every single time I come out with a new video, and give it a thumbs up. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you in next week's video. Cheers to 2021.